Welcome to Lofty Pursuits here in Tallahassee, Florida. We're pouring our hot candy and we're about to make some image candy of little coffee cups. We're going to make about a thousand bite-sized pieces off this piece of hot sugar. Jorin here is taking the bars away from the candy. We have poured the hot sugar between the bars and it's now cooled down enough for us to manipulate. The edges are nice and cool, but the center is still very, very hot. When we poured the candy, it was 320 degrees. And we've mixed in some brown food coloring for the artwork. We're going to separate the brown food coloring from the clear. We've got a big pair of candy scissors. And then we're going to drain the hot center of the candy onto this candy cooling table. Our candy cooling table was made about 150 years ago and has a water-cooled center which drops the temperature of the candy very, very quickly. Our candy starts with a palette of two colors. The colors are brown, which we cut off and put aside for use later, and a white, or cream color in this case, because the candy is going to be coffee, that doesn't look cream, it looks amber. To make it cream, we're going to fold the candy over a candy hook. Every time we fold it, we trap air bubbles, and eventually the air bubbles are going to show. Make the candy opaque, a nice bright white. Each one of these little air bubbles that we're folding in acts like a tiny mirror reflecting light and will make the candy bright and shiny. This is one of the things that makes our candy look so interesting. Jorin here is demonstrating how difficult uh, and how much hand labor goes into our candy as she folds the candy about 75 times and you can see with each pull it becomes brighter and brighter. Eventually it'll be opaque enough for us to use and we're going to wait until she hits that point. While Jorn works on the body of the coffee cup, Greg is rolling out a piece of white candy that he's going to fold brown candy around to make an S-like shape. That S-like shape is going to be then tripled and is going to look like steam coming out of the top of the coffee cup. Notice that the candy is constantly folded. This is because the air temperature cools the top of the candy and the heating table keeps the bottom warmer. We need to keep the candy in even temperature for this entire process and folding it and sometimes kneading it like bread will achieve this. Now we're going to need three of these S shapes that Greg just made. And to make three, we're going to duplicate it in candy. In other words, we're going to stretch it slowly, just like we stretch the final log. And we're going to produce a much longer piece. This longer piece is still going to maintain the S shape. We're going to cut three lengths off it for the three strands of steam that we're going to put over the coffee. And then we're going to take some white and we're going to use it as a spacer. The white is going to be hotter than the uh, steam image. And this is going to be okay in this case because it's going to make the steam image twist just a little bit as it transfers the heat from one to the other. And we want it to twist a little bit more so that none of the steam looks like it's been mass produced. Each one's going to be unique and each one is going to be uh, nice and yummy. Now that the three are together, they're going to end up being shorter than the coffee cup. So Greg is now going to stretch the three as a unit. And it's going to become thinner and it's going to become longer. And now it's time for final assembly. We're going to put this uh, spacer of white on top of what will be our coffee cup while Joran here fabricates the handle of the coffee cup. 
The water is very important because everything's going to be a different temperature and you need to make sure that bits of it flows past each other with the uh, rolling of the candy and other parts stay firmly in place. The image is still recognizable. There goes the coffee cup onto the spacer. When Joran builds the handle for the cup, she's actually building it larger than we're going to use it and stretching it out. It's sometimes easier to build things over sides and then thin them out to the size you finally need them. We did this with the steam and now we're about to do this with the handle of the coffee cup. We add our image of the steam to the top of the coffee cup, and then we get ready to wrap it in the white candy that will act as a spacer before the outside wrap. Now that we have our log of candy built, we have to scale it down to about a half inch diameter. We do this by starting by pinching off the end of the candy and making a big lump that we can't use. We call these unicorn droppings and eventually they get sold in the store as scrap candy fairly cheaply. We then pull from the log rods of candy, roll it back and forth on our candy cooling table, and cut it up into pieces. There's a technique to the pulling where we pull it slowly and evenly. By doing this, the image gets minimally distorted as we pull it down. Greg has now been handed a rod of candy. This rod is going to keep moving as other rods are added to it. If the candy is left still, the candy is still hot enough to go flat and to distort the image. So the candy has to be constantly rolled until the candy becomes fully hard and we can cut it up. If you ever visit Tallahassee, Florida, please come by Lofty Pursuits. Lofty Pursuits is a soda fountain, a toy store, and of course we make Victorian candy on equipment from the 1800s. You can see this all in person here, and we look forward to seeing you at some point. Thanks for watching. Please follow us on Facebook, or just subscribe to us here on YouTube.
size and you're feeling like a toy on a string. What's the difference?